and it looks as though I'm live. Hello everybody, Paul Ducklin back. Sorry I'm five minutes late, it's been a very rushy day today, so I've, uh, I have was a little bit late in, in preparing, so apologies for that. Uh, it's Naked Security live again, being a Friday afternoon. Um, I've My green light's on, so for now for the second week out of the last four, I think I got the sound right from the beginning. Please let me know in the comments if you can hear, just so I know that it's all working. As you can see, today's topic is really the big news of the week. It's been all over. You've probably seen it. You may even have experienced this if you're an Android phone user and you use Google Hangouts or Microsoft Teams. Certainly our own security team did. That's how I became aware of this. So today's topic is fake Android notifications. Should you be worried? So let's start at the beginning. What uh, how did this all begin, in, in at least large-scale abuse of Android notifications? Well, about a week ago, or earlier this week, uh, let's see, uh, Teresa can hear you loud and clear from the Ottawa Valley. Ian Jones, speak up. I don't know whether that's, is that meant to be satirical? Because usually I'm accused of speaking too loud, or have I got the volume a bit low? So Ian, let me know, and if it's a bit quiet, I'll crack the volume up a bit, um, rather than trying to bellow even louder than I am. So earlier this week, people who used Google Hangouts, uh, yes, there are still some who do, uh, started receiving messages that looked like this. Release the Kraken, love it. Uh, you can buy these shirts, by the way. Um, we said this before, uh, that's uh, uh, HTTPS colon slash slash shop dot sophos dot com. All of these slogan shirts, or many of the slogan shirts, um, you can still get those if you like. Uh, Robbie Jenkins sound is fine. Excellent. Thanks, Robbie. So this is how it all started uh, about a week ago. FCM messages, uh, text notification, four exclamation points. So you can imagine, well, that's a message from the Google Hangouts app, a notification. So you don't have to be in the app. Remember, notifications, pop-up notifications, push messages are designed to come up over apps. They're very handy if an app just wants to let you know something. And so people who use Hangouts, if you, if you use uh, apps like this, you'll know that there are topics that you so can subscribe to that allow the operators of the app, in this case, case Google themselves, to decide which notifications go to which people. So the idea is you don't, that, that way you don't bug everybody with every notification. You can actually tell people thing they're interested think people things they're interested in. So this notification was appearing all over the place and it doesn't look like a genuine Google notification. Uh, test notification correctly spelled in that case but four exclamation points, absolutely crazy. And loads and loads of people got these and wondered what was going on. They said, well it looks like a hack, it looks like crooks are doing this, but surely if it were a crook then they'd at least have tried to do some obvious cybercrime with it. It would be asking you to buy bitcoins or click a link or phone a number or do some, you're in danger, phone now, pay money, something like that. But it didn't, there were just messages over and over and over. And uh, Google got on top of this, and the story seemed to point back to, not that th this person was not involved in these bogus messages, obviously. This is just a researcher about two weeks ago, a guy who goes by the name of Abs. I believe he's from India. That's Abs, not as in abdominal muscles. That's A-B-S-S. -S. I presume we say Abs. That, that's his handle. Uh, he wrote an article saying, hey, I made $30,000 in bug bounties from a variety of apps by looking into how they use or don't quite securely enough use this FCM messaging system. Now, FCM stands for Firebase Cloud Messaging. It used to be called Google Cloud Messaging. Before that, it was called Android Cloud to Device Messaging. And it's a service that if you want pop-up, if you want push notifications, like Apple has their push notification service for iPhones, on Google, you can either knit your own messaging service, which is quite complicated, or you can just use Google's cloud service, which, because it's sort of integrated with the phone, with Android itself, uh, the idea is that you authenticate against the messaging system and you say to Google, hey, I want to send this message to my app users who are interested in this topic and Google takes care of it. So the benefits to Google or Apple in Apple's case is they get to, they get to know who's which app users are interested in what stuff because they're handling the traffic. The advantage to you is that doing push messaging potentially to millions of users 
via a cloud service that works globally is not easy at all. So the quid pro quo is that you get from Google this ability to do push notifications supposedly in a secure, controlled and available uh, cloud-based way. Roger, why are there no subtitles or is there a written article? There is a written article. This is the, this is the video version. Um, is it Roger? Yeah. Uh, we do have a written article that describes this and as for subtitles when we upload to YouTube you will get subtitles. This is just a video for people who like to do this in kind of thing interactively, that like to watch, that like to have a little bit of fun in, since we're in lockdown. So we're just chatting through this. There is an article on Naked Security and uh, after it's live I'll go and put the link um, against the Facebook video so you can go and read that if you want or just go to nakedsecurity.sophos.com. Usually what we talk about on Facebook live videos every Friday is something that we have written about during the week and that turned into a big story. So this guy Abs, he's found this, he found a way in which he could, for some apps, he could extract what are essentially authentication tokens and then he found an endpoint, that's an API call, a place in the Google messaging service where he could con connect to and then send messages, notifications on behalf of somebody else's service. Now he wasn't trying to do this for criminal purposes, he disclosed it responsibly, he went to a whole no load of different apps, his article is linked to in our article, you can go and read the details of how he did it, very very informative if you're interested in getting into bounty hunting yourself. He describes in great detail the tools, he's very open about it, the tools he used, how he found, how he kept going, how he disclosed this, how he helped people work through the problem. But it turns out that it looks as though, you just see, Unis sound is okay, excellent, thanks. It sounds as though what happened is somebody other than Abs saw his article and thought, hey, a thing worth doing is worth overdoing. So somebody who maybe didn't have quite the social grace or if you like the legalistic self-control um, just to take read what Abs had said and check that it worked maybe with an app of his or her own, decided, hey, let's prove the point and let's prove it by blasting everybody. So Google Hangouts guys got this message. Google got on top of that. The next, <laughs> the next company to get blasted, it seems, was Microsoft. Uh, these are some that come, came from our own security team. These are, this is the first round of messages. Again, test notifications with several S's. And again, the four exclamation points. I only could fit two on the screen there. You can see they're, they're a minute apart. That's one, one person in our security team got those two messages, which was obviously quite annoying. Uh, so Microsoft figured, whoops, maybe we have some kind of thing where, where we need to revoke an access key or, or look at what's going on to prevent the wrong people initiating push notifications to all of our users. And it seems that when word got around that Microsoft was looking into this, whoever did this, and you know, for goodness sake, why are, when you've proved your point, you don't need to prove it over and over again, and you certainly don't need to prove it a hundred million times. They couldn't resist uh, putting out another push notification. Um, you'll see that one there. Those that's about nine hours later. That's last night, UK time, 9 p.m. Testing notification from Microsoft to investigate the problem. Several notifications in a row. So it wasn't enough to try it with Google. It wasn't enough to try it with Microsoft. They had to do it again with Microsoft. And finally, it seems that Microsoft figured out what was wrong in their case. And no, they didn't send a push notification to Teams users, yet another one. They, this time they actually just tweeted. So there's the tweet. You can find the source of that in the Naked Security article or just go to the, uh, the, 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 the Twitter account you see there. We've isolated the source of the issue and applied a mitigation. Now, they haven't actually said what that mitigation was. Presumably, as I said, it might be retiring uh, an old school, a, a legacy API key, something that let, so that whoever was using whatever it was to connect and send these false messages, fortunately they didn't have any malicious or odious stuff in, they're just really, really annoying. Um, and maybe there's a, an update to the team software as well that actually makes sure that it's not possible to extract from the app enough information to find your way into sending notifications. And as you can imagine, one of the first comments, the first comment back on that tweet was as follows from someone called Angel Puss. Uh, Thank you. My phone was on silent. Others I know weren't as fortunate. 
and you can imagine it is quite annoying to get a message. But how much worse it could have been if this was a link saying, there's a problem, you need to update, here's where you need to go, get this out, remove that one, put that one in, send us half a Bitcoin, whatever it was. You can imagine, or just sending fake news, political slogans, or even as Abs points out in his article, it's possible to embed an image so people could have sent inappropriate images that would have been like Zoom bombing all over again, but would have been Hangouts bombing or Teams bombing. So this isn't a fundamental flaw in the Firebase cloud messaging service itself, just in the way that some apps, many apps apparently, have actually gone about shrouding or using their authentication tokens that have, would allow somebody, as we see, to extract enough information to send messages as if they'd come from the owners of the app. And instead of hacking one person's app, say with malware, to send a message to, you know, like with email, you can then send a message to other people who are on that person's mailing list. In this case, by sending one notification suggestion to the messaging service, the message gets delivered to users of the app app and of course because it's a notification it appears outside the app. So that brings us to the point what do you do about something like this? So I've prepared some, I didn't get new index cards but I did get post-it notes, a nice shiny yellow one this week. So I've got some tips, these are for people that not, there's nothing that you can do as a user in this case because if you had the app and uh, you had set it to display notifications then it would have displayed the notification, you can't really control that short of saying okay I don't want notifications to appear or remembering to put your phone on silent or perhaps saying I don't want to see notifications at the lock screen. By the way, that's not quite specifically um, really relevant to this particular issue, but my recommendation is that you do turn off as much as you can on your phone lock screen, whether it's Android or an iPhone, because it's very tempting to say, well, I've locked my phone, but I still want to see email notifications, SMS notifications, who called me last, all of that stuff. The problem is that that really doesn't do very much for your privacy, because it means when your phone's locked, anyone who's got the phone and looking at it can still make a lot of inferences about who you're talking to, what you're doing, where you are, and so forth, without even needing to unlock the phone. And that would presumably stop the notifications popping up and annoying you if you were asleep at the time. That's Abhishek. Abhishek, are you abs? If so, welcome, my friend, and thank you for your work. Very informative, very useful. I, I seem to recognize your name from somewhere else. You didn't say in your article. So if you are abs, um, welcome, and uh, thanks for giving us something important to talk about. So let's get on with those tips. I'm going to try and make them not specific to the Firebase cloud messaging, but to anybody who's using cloud apps or cloud services for things like messaging or for logging in and managing content. The first thing that you should do is, when if you've got an app, make sure that you regularly review how that app uses, holds, stores, manipulates any authentication tokens or API keys that you may either have embedded in the app or that the app may use. Because if somebody figures out how to extract from your app, and they surely will using legitimate reverse engineering tools. They've got every right and every reason to want to do that if you want to know how an app works or to make it work with other stuff you're doing. Understanding it or to debug and test your app, that's very important. But if you don't understand quite what you're doing or if you're using an old technique for authenticating your app against an online service where that technique has been retired perhaps because it's not as secure or not as safe as the modern way of doing it, you need to make sure that you regularly revisit how your app is connecting um, just so that it uh, to reduce the chance that it can be abused in this sort of way. The second thing of course whatever app you're doing uh, whether it's a, a mobile phone app or an app for a laptop or anything that runs on a server for example it's going to run on a router or anything like that don't hardwire passwords into it because somebody will surely get them out and use them against you in the future. The third thing you need to do, Abs made this very clear in his article, and I want to reiterate this. This is not specific to Firebase cloud messaging or to any notification service or even to any thing that requires API keys. Just in general, you need to review who knows what about which passwords, authentication tokens, logging codes, or whatever you have for your, for your online life 
or for your business. That's really important because if you think that something could have been compromised, then you need to take action now because otherwise the crooks are going to take action for you. And the last tip that I want to mention, and this is quite general, also mentioned by Abs in his article, we've written about, Rick Roten, written about it many times before on Naked Security, and that is that when you are uploading stuff to online services, for particularly, for example, if it's open source code that you intend to share, you need to be careful that when you're bundling something up to share with everyone else, that you don't accidentally bundle in login keys, uh, private key, uh, cryptographic keys, or authentication tokens in there. It's really easy to do. For example, if you're uploading open source stuff onto an online service like GitHub, where somebody can uh, retrieve it. It's really easy that if you don't, if you don't control, if you just go, oh, here's my directory tree with all my source code in, I'll upload all of that, and you don't realize that there may be some hidden directories in that are only supposed to be used locally that may include authentication keys. We've seen many occasions where people have released the source code for an app so that others can use it, but they've put their own encryption or login keys in there when they've uploaded it where other people can go and search and find them. So just very quickly, let's run through that again. If you have using any apps or online services that you automate using an API, an application programming interface, make sure you regularly review how the API keys, the authentication keys for that service work, how you store them in the app, how you maintain them, and make sure that they aren't in a position where the wrong people could find them. The next thing is, for any app you're doing, don't hardwire passwords in there because it's very convenient to do an you know, but basically turns into a backdoor because someone will find it sooner or later. Thirdly, when it comes to passwords, authentication tokens, for any app, any service, whether it's the login for your RDP at work, whether it's your blogging site, whether it's your web content management system, review who knows uh, things like usernames and passwords, who has them, who's supposed to be logging in. And if somebody's not supposed to be logging in, make sure you revoke their credentials so they don't get out there and get abused. And Ab Abhishek, yes, I'm Abs, loving this excellent tour. Thank you, thank you very much. I, I thought it was you and uh, very, very glad to have you along. And lastly, uh, when you are uploading stuff that you intend to share, particularly if it's source code or scripts or technical stuff that you want to share with other people, make sure that you don't accidentally include private stuff in there because very often when you're developing source code locally, you may have things like access keys in the directory tree, in hidden directories that you aren't supposed to share. If you share them by mistake, then the wrong people are going to have them and something bad is going to happen. And it probably next time isn't going to be test notifications with three S's and four exclamation points. It could be something much worse that makes your, that damages your reputation quite severely. So thanks everybody for listening. Take care out there. This time, Fortunately, this looks like a learning exercise that we can make will make us all better at cybersecurity. Nothing. It was very annoying. It was probably illegal. It was certainly rude. It shouldn't have happened. But fortunately, nobody got malware. Nobody got dangerous links. Nobody sent bitcoins to the wrong place, as far as we can tell. So it's like we sort of got away with it. Let's treat it as a learning exercise. So thanks for joining, everybody. And until next time, stay secure.